December, no, not December, January 2nd, 2021. Happy New Year's, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and I haven't made a video for, I think, like two days now. Today is day eight on the ship, and I figured I would make this video right now before I go on watch because we're leaving and we're scheduled to leave here at eight o'clock. But it, you know, that's scheduled to leave at eight. They're still currently unloading and trying to load at the same time the containers onto the ship. So it could be, I could be, end up be working even later. Uh, if I, if we do leave at eight and I'm able to unmoor the ship with everyone and I get off by 2200 or 10 p.m. that'll be really awesome because that means I'll get two hours of OT today and I'll be able to work my four hours tomorrow morning but if we work past 10 o'clock if we're still untying from the dock past 10 then that'll be going into my work rest hours and I'm gonna explain more on that here in a second and I won't be able to do overtime tomorrow, which will really suck because it's like get two today, not have any tomorrow yet again because of work rest hour regulations. Uh, but yeah, so I'm making the video now because most likely I'm either going to get off at 10 o'clock or even 11 o'clock, 22 or 2300 tonight. And we're going, um, we've already started sea watches. We started at midnight today or last night. So if I can, when I get off at either 10 or 11 p.m. tonight, I have to be up on the bridge by 3.45 a.m. to do my four hours of watch, my watch standing. But there's a couple things I've written down that I just want to kind of brief over. Uh, yeah, I'm on my normal watch now, so it's gonna be 3.45 a.m. till 7.45 a.m. or four to eight. I've told you guys this, I think, already. My overtime will end up being eight to 12, as long as I get my work rest hours, which I'll have to project around the days that we moor up and do loads and discharges. We can, I'll explain more of that kind of. Uh, yesterday, I felt so bad. I was I was watching, so the bosun climbed over the rail and he was greasing the winch for the gangway that brings the gangway up and down. And you know, me, I'm working the gangway. Well, I was even, I was watching the bosun grease it and the Q-Med had gone down the gangway to go onto the dock he was setting up for the, the potable water and I went to look over at the gangway not even thinking about it and I looked at the gangway and it was too high up and so the Q-Med had to kind of like take a leap down well I went to lower the gangway a couple inches and the bosun started yelling and Boom, near miss. My my dummy. I just wasn't thinking at all. And you know, I've been I've gotten into this routine of working on the gangway where I just go, I look at the gangway. If it's too low or too high, I adjust it. Well, even though I was watching the bosun grease it, grease the winch that operates the gangway, he was climbing all over it, greasing it back and forth. I you know subconsciously or unconsciously just did my job I looked at the gangway and adjusted it and you know if his hand was right in the wrong spot the 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 wires could have pinched his hand something could have happened uh, so that, that was a near miss and yeah that that, that wasn't good <laughs> um, oh a lot of you guys and girls asked me about how I get paid on the ship and no I'm not telling you what I get paid but how I get paid 
my last shift they had to pay off every two months so until then end of the year so like now it'd be january february and then you get completely paid off at the end of february well they did allotments the 15th the first and the 15th so you get either all your paycheck or a majority of your paycheck and the company would actually hold on to some that way if you did want to get in advance or ask for cash you know you show up to a, a country or a place and you want some cash to go out you can go to the captain and ask the captain for some money um, so they usually that's where they do allotments kind of like that and here I guess it's they pay us off I think he said at the end of each trip I think that's what he said or before each trip so before or at the end of each trip we do which is anywhere from 9 to 12 or 10 to 13 days we'll get completely paid off the books will get cleared uh, so that's how it is here my last ship was allotments first and 15th completely paid off at the end of two months here I think it's completely paid off at the end of each trip like you know from here Washington to Alaska and back we get back to Washington I think before we start a new voyage they pay us off uh, or or is it I don't know I'll, I'll, I'll I'll follow up on you guys with that. <laughs> uh, foul weather gear. I wanted to bring this up because I actually had like two two comment comment questions asking if the ships. Well, have I been that close the whole time? You guys have asked if the ships provide you with foul weather gear, and some might, some might not. The reason why I'm answering it now, and I'll probably make a, a whole separate video talking about it, but I'm answering it now because right now, also, I had something up in Alaska right now is like some record storm going on, and we're going to be going right into it. But you know, every storm nowadays in the news is a record storm. So, but you know, we were talking about it, and I've had like the mates ask me like, oh, I hope you brought cold weather gear. It's like, yeah, you know, I always bring my full monkey suit, blah, 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 blah. And they even, you know, they said like, you'd be surprised how many people will come here knowing they're going to Alaska and not bring cold weather gear. I think a lot of people assume that the ships are going to provide everything for you. And some ships do, some ships, it matters on a company, on a contract. Some ships will provide you with cold weather gear, but not all companies do. Not all contracts do. They might provide you with cold weather gloves. Some might give you a parka. You know, my last my last ship, I went through like the whole winter basically, and right before I got off the ship, they're like, "Oh yeah, we bought everybody parkas." But I was like, the whole the winter was almost over, and. I was leaving, so it didn't matter. <laughs> um, oh, back to the like, overtime. I'm going to be what I, filling out. This is new to me. My last ship, because everything was just kind of set in hours, four hours guaranteed all the time, and you know they really planned out how, when we came into the dock and everything. Here. It really varies on how fast longshoremen can load and unload the cargo. So here, I actually have to fill out my work and rest hours myself. So with work and rest hours, as a watchstander, we need to have at least 10 hours off in a 24-hour period, and at least one of those, one of the breaks, it can be split into two, but at least one of them has to be a six-hour span. So that's where I said I have to get off by 10 o'clock tonight because I have to work at 4 a.m. Then I'll have my six hour span in this tomorrow's 24 hour period. 
and I'll be able to work overtime tomorrow. But if I work past 10 o'clock at all, then that goes into that six hours until I go to watch, which means my next time off will have to be six hours, which really can screw things up. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I got. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'll fill you guys in again, either maybe when I get off tonight, mattering if I get off early enough. If, if I get off like at nine o'clock, then I'll make another video before bed, maybe talk about it. Otherwise, I'll fill you guys in tomorrow on this new mooring operation I'm getting into because they both have wire windlasses, cable windlasses, and soft and hard hawsers. So that's new to me, having both soft line and cable to deal with. I haven't dealt with cable yet, so I'm definitely going to fill you guys in with that. Uh, hit that subscribe button, like, comment, share, and I will see you tomorrow.